Hi, I'm Heather with the Sons of the Utah Pioneers. We're going to make a hoop skirt today. This project should take right about two hours to do. You need a twin size sheet and about 20 feet of soaker hose, the kind that you put in your garden from the hardware store. Real quick about the soaker hose. This is a seasonal item that they only stock during the summertime. They will carry it through the winter, um, but if it runs out of stock, they're not getting any more. So that is a concern if you're having a big party like we are in October, but luckily they do have plenty in stock at the moment. Another thing that you want to know is that the best time to buy this is in the summertime while the weather is hot because it comes in a tight wound like a garden hose would come. The best place to mold this into shape is on your driveway during the heat of the summer. So you want to lay it out flat in a big circle and the heat will literally, you know, kind of cook it into shape. For storage, you want to keep it away from heat. The best place to put this is under your bed, under your couch. Um, or even hang it up in the back of your closet on hooks like this. But where most of the hoop skirts that you'll buy online, they'll have you roll it up like this. And you probably don't want to do that with your soaker hose because it's, it's going to get, it's going to mold it into that tighter shape again and it's going to come out all cattywampus. So you want to go ahead and kind of try to keep it in the shape you want and then it'll always be ready. When, when you're ready to use it, no matter what time of year that is. Okay, so to get started, I just wanna show you what we're doing. This is what it's going to look like. We're gonna take care of our fabric piece first, and once the front and the back are put together on one of the sides, we're going to be sewing these channels. So we have the channel that's holding our bottom hoop and the channel that's holding our top hoop. We're gonna do this pear-shaped size that was really um, popular in the 1850s and, and early 1860s. Then when we're done with our channels, we're going to turn over the, the waistband and insert the ribbon and the boning, and that'll be it. So let's get started. One of the first things I like to tell people is I use sheets as much as possible because um, it's a lot of fabric for a very small amount of money. So to get started, I have my twin sheet here, and the first thing we're going to do is to snip off the top pocket. Fabric grain always runs straight, which cutting in the factory doesn't. So we're gonna rip it and it will always rip straight along the grain. So we're gonna cut off the top and then we're gonna cut off the bottom, which will be directly on the other end. Here's my top that we just cut and here's my bottom. So we're gonna snip and rip. Now hang on to that top pocket for a little bit later. We're gonna be using it again, but in the meantime, we're gonna fold the whole thing and we're gonna start thinking about what are exactly are we doing. So one of the things to think about in a hoop skirt is we do not want it to go all the way to the floor. So if you see, this is plenty long enough for what we're doing and we want it to be plenty wide enough to go all the distance that you want it to go. Some people want a very large Scarlett O'Hara uh, sized hoop skirt and some people want to go a little bit smaller, but this will give us the, the width for anything you want to do. Um, so in that case, we're going to snip and rip our top. So, so this open end down here, this ripped edge is going to be our bottom, and this ripped edge will become our top. Now this, so this is going to become our side seam. And we're going to go ahead and rip these off too, because they're just this uh, edge that we have here. Uh, I've tried it both ways, uh, where I've left it on or I've taken it off, and it seems to just get in the way. So I'm going to do both of them at the same time. And then we're going to sew down that side seam right off the bat. Um, so first, uh, what I'm going to do is just sew it down with a straight stitch, and then I'm going to zigzag along the edge to make sure it's nice and firm. It's not gonna unravel on us when we're in the middle of dancing or what have you. I 
And now we'll go with the zigzag stitch. If anyone has an overlock machine, that would do wonders right here. Uh, but for those of us who don't, we'll do what we can do. So the first thing we're going to do is cut off that extra so that we have a clean edge right up against your zigzag stitch. And this is going to basically be similar to a surged edge with a serger machine. So now that we have the front and the back put together, we're going to go right into measuring. For the purposes of this measuring, we're going to have this be the top and this be the bottom. So initially, we're going to turn under a very large casing for our bottom boning to go through. The bottom boning will come about 12 inches from the floor, and so the bottom of this will come about 12 inches from the floor. So we're going to measure and mark where the next casing will be. Many of the hoop skirts have a, a pear shape or a bell-shaped bottom where it's widest at the very bottom, and some of them will have a pagoda uh, shape where it's more like an apple, the Scarlet O'Hara type of thing. Um, you can decide where you want yours, but for the sake of our workshop today, we're gonna make it like this one here where it's the widest at the very bottom. What we're doing here is we're making the, the casing for where that boning is gonna fit in. Here with our skirt, we have the bottom casing, and then we have a higher casing that's on the inside. So these are the parts that we're gonna measure at this time. So first, we're gonna measure for a seam allowance. I like to use about a half inch, and then we're gonna fold that up three and a half inches, plus about 12 inches in between the two bonings. So we're gonna be looking at about 16 inches from the edge here. So I'm gonna mark that at 16 inches because I want to know where the next boning is gonna go. We're just gonna keep going all through the length of this fabric. And then we're gonna connect our dots. So we're gonna allow about half an inch of seam allowance to finish the inside edge. We're gonna allow about three inches plus the seam allowance for the bottom casing. And then we're going to have the top pocket for the top casing about 12 inches higher than that. So I'm marking this at three and a half inches and 16 inches all along the bottom of our skirt here. Okay. So we have measured and marked our lines. We have our bottom hoop and our top hoop here. Your markings will be on the inside of your hoop skirt, so they're not gonna show on the outside, which tells us when we turn over, when we start turning things over, this is gonna be the inside of our fabric. So um, the first thing we're gonna do at this stage is um, turn over a half inch um, to prepare for turning over that bottom casing. So we're gonna sew that first. So now that we've turned this under at the very, very edge, we're going to mar we're going to we're going to have this pencil line 
be the very bottom of our casing. So now we have our bottom finished edge. We're going to roll it right over where that pencil line was. And uh, I'm someone who I use pins as little as possible and this is one place I will use them. So, and this just keeps me straight on where I'm going and what I'm doing. So I'm going to open it up, look for my pencil line and roll it right over there. I have this nice finished edge that I'm going to continue through through the whole hem here. So this is a casing hem. And we'll find our pencil line, roll it over and keep on going. So now this is all pinned and ready for sewing. So here, if we could get a, a little closer, um, I'm going to get fairly close to just sewing right on that previous line that we just sewed before. The important part is that we have this finished edge and that that part looks nice. And then obviously this bottom edge will be finished as well. And uh, we just want a nice big space for that tube to travel through because the tube is going to go right into this pocket. So, so here we go. Now that we've finished our bottom casing, where the bottom hoop is going to go through, we're going to approach our next casing line uh, where the, the next hoop is going to go through. So uh, this is going to be approached a little bit differently since it's in the middle of the fabric and not on the end. We're going to start at the other end this time. And we're going to find that pencil line. And we're going to put that right at the edge. If you can see that pencil line here, we're going to just pinch it and put it right at that edge. And then again, we're going to pin this. I do not like using pins unless I have to, but they're sure are there to help. And um, let's put them in from this angle. So again, I'm finding that pencil line. I'm pinching it up. We're going to shake it nice and as flat as these wrinkles will let us. Okay, so we're going to get this. So where we're going to put this stitch line is going to come in our seam allowance. And we're going to look at that at the machine. So we have this ready to sew our, um, our, our next casing for our upper bone. And just like we had this really large casing here, we want to do the same thing again here. So we want to take about three inches, 
uh, two and a half to three inches. Um, it's not rocket science, it doesn't have to be exact, but whatever you start with, you want to keep it going consistently through the whole line, and that's with everything we're doing. This is going to be a very unusual um, seam allowance for uh, what most people normally do in their sewing. So it's good to find, with all of our little lines here, it's good to find another gauge. So I'm going to use the end of my sticker as where I'm going to be finishing this. Um, so just a, a quick rule of thumb for, for any real beginners out there. It's just the sticker and it has this line right here. So I'm just lining it up to there as I go. So where we are at this point, we have our bottom pocket, we have our top pocket. So the next step is to sew our other side seam. So in the very, very beginning, we sewed our first side seam, and now we're going to sew together the other side seam. One of the things we want to be careful of here is to not sew our pockets shut. So notice we're going to line these up, and we're going to leave these openings open. And we're going to leave, see how nicely that, ooh, we did a good job today. Um, and then we're going to leave these openings open. We're going to sew it here. And then we're going to sew it all the way up to the waistline. So notice we're skipping these section and we're starting right there. For my seam allowance, what I'm doing here is I'd like to keep at least about half an inch because uh, that'll keep it good and strong so that it won't fray and come apart. Uh, but for my purposes here where I'm doing it, this is the original uh, hemming that came on the sheets themselves. It's a nice clean finish, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. And, uh, and so where I'm putting my stitch line is just so that that doesn't show on the outside. So this is this is the inside. It's you know you sew inside out. Okay, so we've just finished sewing our second side seam. We did the first side seam right in the beginning, and now we've just finished our second one. And just so we can kind of get a picture on our length, um, we're going to talk a little bit about height and length and width a little bit later, uh, but I'm about five foot five, and um, so we've still got some pretty good length on here. Uh, you do not want your hoops to go all the way to the floor. Uh, they say we're going to do a little bit of a casing for our, our ribbon. It'll end up being about that long. They say 10 to 12 inches from the bottom of the floor is, uh, is a good length for your hoop skirt. 
So the next thing, all there is left to do for, uh, for sewing the body of our garment here is making the casing where we're going to thread through our, our drawstring at the waist. So we're going to um, turn it over uh, just a quarter of an inch and then we're going to turn it over oh about an inch from there. It'll make a nice, nice little channel for our little ribbon there. Okay, so that just finished our uh, quarter inch turn, and now I'm going to turn it over about, about an inch. And again, so now I'm going to line it up right at that one inch line. Okay, I want to draw your attention to anytime you're making a casing where you know you're going to be threading something through the tube, you want to make sure that this, uh, we've had two bits of seam allowance um, come through. This is the second one, and we want to make sure they're both going the same way. So I happen to have these ones pointing toward me, um, and, and they both are pointing toward me, so that as we're threading something through, we don't get stuck in, in a spot, in a place that you can't reach. So I want to draw your attention to something that we're coming up on here. As I'm doing this one inch turnover for the casing for the ribbon at the waistband, uh, we're, we're, we're sewing over the seam allowance of the side seams. And one thing you want to pay attention to that as you're going to be running something through this tube here, that you want to be careful to make sure that each of these seams is going the same way, the same direction on the inside, so that you don't get stuck on the inside. I watched on the other side that it was going toward me, and now this one is going toward me too. You can go the other way if you want to, as long as they're both the same. Okay. So now that we've done our middle pocket, our bottom pocket, we've sewn both side seams and we've sewn the casing that's ready for our uh, waistband. Um, before we put our waistband in, I wanna put in my hoops in first. This is where it gets exciting because it starts to take shape. So we're gonna do one hoop at a time. So since we're gonna put this into the pear shape, uh, I want my, my bottom hoop to be bigger and then I'm going to have that next hoop up be a little bit smaller. So while we're here, let's go ahead and just figure out what that would look like. So then one of the other things I love about working with soaker hose is that it is really easy to cut. There we go. So now we're going to thread this through. And we're going to start with the bottom one the larger one, and I've put duct tape on the end, and that just helps it so that the end doesn't grip the fabric. Um, it can be really difficult to thread it through if it's gripping onto the fabric, so this way it's just gonna hopefully slide right through. We're still gonna have a little bit of gripping just because we're dealing with rubber and recycled tires, but um, for the most part,
Okay, so there's my end. So here I'm going to take off that Now we're going to connect them together. There's a couple different ways that you can do this. Um, I know some people who use pencils. They just shove a pencil up in there and they uh, hot glue gun it. And then, uh, or sometimes you can even cut this down a little bit and squeeze, you know, roll it up and squeeze one side in. Uh, my favorite way is to use uh, a little dowel. I pick these up, just, you know, the long wooden doweling and I cut it to a few inches. Um, two and a half to three inches is really great. Uh, four inches is a little too long because then you have a straight spot on your circle. Um, but we're going to go ahead and use these today. This is great because sometimes uh, if you don't have a nice straight uh, edge here, it'll kind of buckle and do odd things that are, you're going to lose your circular shape. So we're going to do this with our uh, our dowel here. So we're gonna glue, glue, glue. I'm gonna stick it in one end. Then we're going to fill up the other end with glue. Boop. And we're going to let that glue solidify right in the middle, if you can see that. And then when it's a little bit tackier, we'll smash it down a little bit more. Right there yet. So um, one thing to be careful of, we don't want the um, the hot hot glue to touch the fabric because then it's gonna get bunchy and weird. So here we have this nice straight strong place that's not gonna buckle either way and it's gonna help keep your circle nice and round. So now we're gonna put the second hoop through the second. Okay, so for this smaller hoop, um, there's going to be quite a lot of gathering through here. We're not going to even those out until after we've connected and uh, after we've got our ends connected. So we're just going to leave those for a minute. Okay, so now we've put our second hoop through our second, through our upper casing. Uh, this should be hitting right around knee level. And we're going to secure it with a dowel like we did with the bottom one. There we go. So we'll let that settle. And again, we're gonna hold that open until the glue has dried. So right now, well, let's look at this inside out. I 
and start to even up those gathers. All right, that's fairly even. We'll do some more evening of those out when we put it on a dress form. And the next part is, the very last part, is to put on the waistband. Today, we are gonna be using a large ribbon that's gonna be somewhat decorative, even though it's on underwear, but let's face it, ladies, we like a little bit of decorative underwear. So let's call this the front today. And uh, some of you might like to finish this off a little bit nicer. There's various ways that you can do that, but for our intents and purposes today, we're just gonna cut it open. And here is our ribbon. We are, and there's a couple, there's lots of ways that you can thread a ribbon through. Um, what, what I'm going to do today is uh, with a handy dandy little tool I have, but honestly, I'm just using this because it's super long, uh, but let's face it, a great big safety pin will do the same thing. And we have our opening there. Now let's remind ourselves what direction is our seam allowance going? That way, so we are going to go that way. And just like we did with the tubing, we're gonna just push it through. And you can see why I like a really big tool here, a really nice and long. Um, but like I said, a, a really big safety pin will do the same thing, just be a little tiny bit shorter. And there, see we went right over that seam allowance, it just went smooth as pie. So, here we are. The next step is to put it on our dress form and make sure all of our little gathers are where we want them to be. So we are ready. We've gotten this all ready. We have our waistband ready and we're going to um, kind of give it a trial run. We're going to smooth out our ruffles and all kinds of things. But first I wanna talk about what this lovely mechanism is. This is a bum roll. In the very beginning of our project here, I told you to hang on to that top pocket of your of your of your sheet, and um, this is this is what that's for. We're not going to go into a lot of detail on how to make it. Basically, um, you can use this fabric here to just sew it, stuff it, put you know attach ribbons to the sides. I would suggest that when you put the ribbons in here, you uh, really take a lot of attention to make them really, really strong. That's This is where your weak point will be, uh, is right in here. Uh, that's where all of your tension is going to sit. Having a bum roll is really great. So this is just a nice place for your hoop skirt to rest. So now, we're gonna even up all of our gathers. Now, sometimes uh, you'll see that this looks a little off kilter where this is sticking up farther than that, and it's just by where the gathers landed. So thank you for joining us at the Sons of the Utah Pioneers. We're having our, our workshop on October 27th, and we're having our Brigham's Ball on January 12th, 2019. <laughs>